so the whole world watch my card magic vfx video and now you want to know how i did it so i posted a part one of this series in which we just model the cards and now we're gonna jump into particle system and force fields to achieve this crazy effect it's it's quite easy actually so let's start by bringing in our cards from the previous tutorial if you didn't follow along or missed it, th there's a blend file containing the cards in the description. It's free, go grab it from there. So once we're done appending the cards, disable them. Then I'm going to append the phone model. If this looks familiar, then you're right. This is from Derek Elliott's phone animation tutorial. Yep. So the idea is that a bunch of cards are going to appear through the screen of our phone. And we're going to do that with the help of particle system and force fields. So let's start with the phase one, particle system. I'm going to add a cube and model it in a way that fits the inside of the phone. This cube is going to be our emitter object. I'm going to put this emitter object in a separate collection. Then click on the particle system icon. You'll notice that this field is empty and that's because we haven't added a particle system. So to add a particle system, click this plus button. Now if you hit play, you'll notice that a bunch of balls dropping down. That's great. Now let's take a look at its settings. Number means the amount of particle the emitter is going to emit. Start and end frame means that in this time frame, the emitter is going to emit 1000 particles. Lifespan means the amount of frames the particles are going to be visible in this animation. Now, it's set to 50. This means that once a particle is emitted, it's going to be visible only for 50 frames. Seed basically adds variation in the emission. So, I'm going to set the start frame to 100 and end frame to 300 and set the number to 1500 and set the lifespan to something like 500000 and that's because I want the cards to be visible during the entire animation. So this means that during these 200 frames, the particle system is going to emit 1500 particles. Feel free to experiment with these values, you know, it's up to you. And also I'm going to set the start frame as 100 and end frame as 1000. Source, okay. This will determine how and from where the particles are emitted. So under source, under emit from menu, we basically have three choices. Faces would emit particles from the faces, volume would emit from the volume, and vertices would emit from the vertices. In our case, faces or volume would work just fine. I'm gonna go with faces though. Then make sure random order and even distribution is checked and the jittering amount is set to one. We also want to tell the particle system to emit only from the top faces. So select our emitter object, go into edit mode, right click and subdivide it, just so it has more faces to emit from. Then select only the top faces, go to object data properties, make sure that group one is selected and hit assign. You can name the group whatever you want. Now let's go into our particle system under vertex group, under density, choose our newly created vertex goal. group, <laughs> group, newly created vertex group, great. So this basically told the particle system to emit only from the, only from this group, yeah. Now, if we hit play, we get this. So you can see that we have a bunch of problems. Firstly, we want the particles to go up. And secondly, we want the emitter to emit cards instead of these spears. Let's start by making the particles flow up. The reason why they're going down is because of gravity. There are two ways to turn it off. You can either go to the scene settings and uncheck this, or you can go to the particle settings under force field weights, turn down the gravity to zero. I recommend this because this value can be animated. So just in case you want the gravity back, you can just easily do it over here. Great, so if we hit play, nothing changes. The reason for that is the normals of our emitter object are flipped. For newbies, normals are nothing but the faces that are supposed to be facing the camera. You can think of them as outside faces, and they are represented by the color blue, and the inside faces are represented by the color red. To prove that I'm not an alcoholic, go over to the overlay tab and check face orientation. We can see that our object is red, which means that the normals are flipped. To fix that, go into edit mode, hit A to select everything and hit shift N. That command just recalculated the normals. Now, now that we know it's blue, let's uncheck face orientation and hit play. Great. So now the particles are going up. Now let's switch the spears to cards. To do that, go to the render settings under the particle settings and over here we have it set render as hollow. So let's change that to collection. Then this section appears. So under collection, choose our all cards collection. Also, before we hit play, make sure that you have object scale and rotation checked. Perfect. So now if we hit play, we get to see our cards. Teeny tiny cards. We can fix that by simply changing the, changing the scale value under the render settings. Now, the scale would depend on your artistic choice. I'm going to set the scale at 0 0.3. Now, if we take a look, yeah, 
going good. This is all awesome in itself, but that's not the effect that I'm going for. I want them to have some sort of rotation and I want it to be random. I can do that by enabling rotation. Then I'm going to change the randomize to something like 0.65 and the face to 0.5. So now we get some weird things going on. It is working, but it looks weird cause they're, they're so close to each other. Let's talk about few other settings before we move on to the force fields. Velocity basically controls the speed of our emission if I'm not wrong. So if you change the normal value to something like 20, we'll get this. It's cool though. The next one is going to be physics right below rotation. Here we can do a lot of stuff but the only thing that we are going to be messing with is the mass which basically means the weight of our cards. The higher the mass the faster the animation is going to be and vice versa. I'm going to set this at 0.3. Perfect we're done with phase 1. Congrats for making it through if you did. Now let's move on to phase 2. Force fields. So from here we get access to all of this force field which are 13 in total and they're all awesome. So before we start adding them, let's break down what we want these cards to do. We want them to rise from the phone and as they are rising, we want them to spread. Then after a while, we want them to scale, then we want them to rotate. And when that's done, we want them to dissolve or shrink. So basically, we want 5 different things to happen here. And lucky for us, each of them can be done with the help of force fields. So let's take it step by step. Step 1. Rising. Now, if we hit play, it is already rising, but it's too slow. We can change the speed under velocity, but I ended up using the wind force field. So let's add in our wind force field. And once you've added it, make sure to name it and move it in its own collection. This is where I'm going to add all my force fields. Now, if we hit play, you can notice that the speed has changed. Let's head over to its settings by clicking on the physics properties. So we have a bunch of parameters. Shape means the direction which is used to calculate the effector's force. We have two of them which are point and plane. Point means it's going to affect all the axes which are x, y and z. Plane means it's going to affect only the z axis. Strength means how big of an effect it's going to have and you can think of flow as adding resistance to our strength. These two are just obvious but make sure that they're checked. Noise means well adding noise to our effector and see it gives it variation. Okay so the default values are perfect in this case so if we play we can see that it goes up and up and up and up. Well, that's not what we want. We want it to stop when the emitter stops emitting cards which is right after frame 300. So go to frame 300, make sure that your wind force field is selected and then add in a keyframe by hitting I while hovering over the strength. So, you can also add a keyframe by clicking the start. Great. So go to the next keyframe then change the strength to zero and add a keyframe. Now if we play, we get this which is great. But we have one problem and that is that the cards just stop immediately. I want them to ease out. We can do that by delaying the wind keyframes. I found 15 frames delay the best in this case. But instead what I can do is I can set the end frame of the particle system to be 285. And that's what I ended up doing. That's, that's because I want the rising animation to be faster. So now if we hit play. Perfect. So step 1. Complete. Now we move forward to step 2. Spreading the shit out of it. So to make the spread I ended up using the magnetic force field. So let's add in a magnetic force field. Now if we hit play you'll notice that nothing's happening. Well the effect is there but it's too small. So here's a little trick for you. Whenever you want to know what a force field does, just set its strength to something high like 10. Then hit play. Damn that's that's weird. So we have to input in a negative value. I ended up using negative 0.3. Set the flow to 0 and set the shape to point if it's not already. Hit play and ta-da! It's working great. But we also want it, we also want it to stop. So just like we did with the wind force field, add a keyframe at 300, go to the next keyframe, change the strength to 0 and add another keyframe. Perfect. Step 2. Complete. We're doing great guys. Now time for step 3. Scaling or making it pregnant. This can be done with the help of force force field. I know that sounds weird. Either way. Add it and set the strength to 10 and hit play. Damn that, that's some crazy shit. So it's doing what we want but it's a bit too extreme. Also, we want the force field to activate after the wind and magnetic fields. I ended up using a 60 frame gap. So go to frame 360 which is 60 frames after frame 300. Then set the strength to 0 and add in a keyframe. And make sure that the shape is set to point. Then go 10 frames ahead and set the strength to 0.3 and add a keyframe. And th that's because I want them to expand. I don't, I don't want them to expand immediately. <laughs> Again, that's an artistic choice. Then. I want it to stop after 2 seconds, so 60 frames. 360 plus 60 is 420. Great. Add a keyframe. 
then go to the next frame and set the strain to zero and add another keyframe hit play and okay good but but it's scaling from the bottom and i want it to scale from the middle of a tornado that's a simple fix just bring up the force force field great now hit play and ta-da so the lesson here is that the location of our fields matter as well great step three completed now time for step four rotation or getting stoned as i like to call it we're gonna do that with my favorite force field vortex so let's add in a vertex, set the strength to 10 and hit play. Hmm, that, that's weird. But in this case, the issue is the shape. So if we change the shape to point and hit play, yep, crazy, but it's doing what we want. Now, I want the rotation to start shortly after the scaling animation ends. Let's say uh, 40 frames after. So go to frame 460 and change the strength to zero and add a keyframe. Then go 180 frames forward, which is 640, then change the strength to 0.2 and add a keyframe. This is because I want the rotation to slowly gain speed. Then I want it to rotate for a while and then stop. So go to somewhere like 779 and add, a, add in a keyframe. Then go to the next frame and change the strength to zero and add a keyframe. So if we play, ah, great. But it's still too fast for my taste. So this is where we're going to play with the flow. Go to the start our vortex animation and add a keyframe on flow which is set to zero of course then go to the next keyframe and change the flow to one and add a keyframe and i want the flow to remain one throughout the entire animation now if we play perfect also the rotation is too normal i want it to jiggle and we have a perfect force field for that the turbulence force field so add in a turbulence and set the strain to 10 and hit play great too freaking fast but i want this to start with the vortex and end with the vortex so go to the fr frame 460 set the strength to zero and add in a keyframe also make sure that the shape is set to point then go to the next keyframe and change the strength to 0.5 then go to frame 779 and add in a keyframe from strength for strength then go to the next keyframe set the strength to zero and add a keyframe damn that 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 looks awesome yep so step four complete boy we guys are on fire now the last step step five shrinking in or maya this one is going to be pretty easy to set up remember how we added the force force field to scale everything up well we want the exact opposite of that and for for that all we have to do is set the strain to something negative now we could just animate the last force field force force field but for control's sake i'm gonna add another one and name it force shrink so i want this to activate after the vortex so let's say 60 frames after so 779 plus 60 would be 839 so on frame 839 set the strain to zero and add a keyframe make sure that the shape is set to point then go to go 10 frames ahead and set the strain to negative 20 and add a keyframe so if we play now we get this which is perfect but you'll notice that the cards are still staying there and we want them to disappear like Autodex maya for that to happen, all we have to do is animate the scale in the particle settings. Let's head over to the render settings in particle system. Then go to somewhere over here and add a keyframe for the scale parameter. Then go to somewhere like this and change the scale to zero and add a keyframe. Notice that it doesn't change to zero, but, but that's okay. We'll fix it later. But first, let's see how the shrinking is working. All right, looks good. But you can notice that the particles are still here. And uh, that, that's really ugly. Well, we can, we can easily get rid of it. Over here in the collection panel, enable render only. Then go to the frame where the cards are just about to shrink completely and then go to our emitter object under the collection panel and hit high I while hovering over the camera icon. Yep, you can animate that as well. Then go to the next frame and click on the camera icon. It will look something like this. Then hit I again. You're done. So now these little particles won't render, but they will still be visible in the viewport. But but they won't render, I promise. Awesome. Step five, complete. So this is our animation so far, and it it looks great. Yeah. So once you're happy with our animation, we want to save it, right? Or cache it. So go to cache settings and hit bake. This basically saves our animation into Blender system. Great, looking awesome. So this part is still kind of clipping out, but you can easily get rid of it in compositing or at, least, or, <laughs> or at least that's how I got rid of it. And all that's left is the camera animation, which is really not that difficult. Also, I would encourage you to mess around with the force field settings and stuff. You know, it's, it's, it's pretty awesome. All right, that's it from me. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, be infinite.